Yo, what is going on? You're checking out QG HQ. My name is Chris. Welcome back to the channel. So some of you guys that are might not know, but I'm in the process of building a brand new studio space. When I get into that studio space and I'm all settled in, I plan doing a lot more frequent live streaming. So I wanted a dual PC setup. I already have my main rig ready to go. I wanted a side rig to handle all of the encoding of that stream. Now, when I started to dive into more of these dual PC setups, I saw a lot of them are all using mid towers or full towers for the most part. And I just really wasn't about that. I feel like it's a lot of unnecessary desk space and it just doesn't really look that clean. So I started to look at some ITX builds and that's when I came across the beautiful Iquinix ZX1. This case is minimal, aesthetically pleasing, and it hits all those bells and whistles. I mean, this thing even won a Red Dot Award. So uh, this case was my very first ITX build and it was very, very easy to build in. Everything that you need is included in the box, even down to the screwdriver. So um, I'm gonna go over my process, the components I put into the streaming rig. And just because I turned mine into a streaming rig, doesn't mean you have to do the same. If you guys wanna have a main minimal powerhouse rig, I've seen this case housing some serious components and uh, it will make anyone's minimal setup look really, really good. So if you're in the whole ITX realm and you're looking for that perfect case, uh, I mean, look no further. I'm pretty sure that the Iconic ZX1 might be for you. Now, this ZX1 case is fully aluminum with two magnetic side panels, as well as a magnetic top cover with plenty of ventilation. And like I mentioned earlier, you get everything included in the box that you're basically gonna need to get this build up and off the ground. They include things like this nifty little plastic case here with every screw that you're gonna need. You also have this metal screwdriver with multiple different screw heads. We also have a 2.5 inch hard drive bracket if you need one for an SSD. We have an extended PSU power cable. And then we have a PCIe riser cable that is 3.0, not 4.0. So remember that depending on what kind of components you wanna put into this build. And obviously if you do come into any issues, they do obviously include some directions here. But like I mentioned earlier, it, everything is pretty straightforward with this build. On the top front end of the case, you're gonna find two USB 3.0 ports, as well as a audio jack for a headset, as well as a microphone jack. We also have a USB type C port as well. On the lower front end of the case is where you're gonna find your on and off switch. And this case comes in multiple different color options over on their website. Now, trust me, it was very difficult for me to make a decision because I love all of the color options that are available and they just look really, really nice. But ultimately I opted for the coral color option because I really like that white aesthetic with that orange top. I think it gives the uh, case a little bit more flair and I feel like it's gonna look really nice in the new studio. Now, this also comes in two different sizes. This case comes in the air-cooled or the water-cooled edition, right? I have the water-cooled here, which is gonna sit slightly taller than the air-cooled because I have to fit a radiator as well as two fans or maybe one fan beneath it. Now, I chose to go with a water-cooled AIO because one, it's easier for me to maintain personally, and I wanna keep this case as quiet as possible. Now, when it comes to the AIO, you could fit a 240 millimeter radiator up top with two 120 millimeter fans beneath that radiator. That gives you just about 33 millimeters in thickness between the coral vent and the top bracket. This being a streaming rig and not really for gaming, I went ahead and opted for a single fan radiator and I went ahead and picked up the Corsair H60. When it comes to picking an AIO for this actual PC case, I would recommend getting one with a more flexible pump option. If you have too stiff of cables, it's gonna be a little bit more of a pain to navigate it through the case itself. Now, another thing I strongly recommend that's going to save you a ton of time is to remove that top bracket and run the AIO pump through the intended bracket before you go ahead and install it to your CPU and motherboard. Trust me, you will thank me later. Uh, it will make your life way easier. Now for the CPU, I went ahead and I picked up the i7-10700K. And I know you might be thinking that's a bit overkill for something that's just gonna be doing encoding, but um, the price difference just wasn't there between the i5 and the i7. And honestly, I'm gonna be using the onboard graphics on this CPU because I'm not gonna be installing a GPU. So I know it's still a little bit of overkill, but in the end, it's just worth it when it comes to price difference. Now, the motherboard that I went ahead and picked up is the Asus ROG Strix Z490i Gaming. Why, you ask? Well, because it was the only one available at the time of this build. Literally, that was my only choice. But in the end, upon further inspection, it ended up kind of working out because this motherboard pairs very nice with this 10th gen chipset. It has a lot of heatsink 
And at the same time, if I do want to install a GPU down the future to turn this rig into a gaming rig, I'll have a really nice motherboard already installed. I also grabbed 16 gigabytes of Crucial Ballistic RAM, as well as a Samsung SSD 980 500 gigabyte M.2. Now, I could have went ahead and got away with a 250 gigabyte, but it was literally a $10 price difference between 250 and 500. So obviously I went ahead and picked up the 500 gigabyte uh, M.2. Now, before you go ahead and install the motherboard, I urge you to listen to me here, please. Uh, make sure that you install the bracket for the cooler on the back of the motherboard. Make sure you install all of the components onto the motherboard as well as the riser cable and make sure you plug in all of the PSU cables and any other cables into the motherboard. Trust me, once you install that motherboard into this case, you're not gonna have a ton of room to get your fingers in there and plug in other cables or move things around on the actual motherboard itself. Uh, it definitely will save you some time. Install everything cable-wise and just component-wise to the motherboard before it is installed into the case. I urge you, listen to me. Speaking of a PSU, I went ahead and picked up the fully modular Corsair SF600. Once you get your PSU in hand, you're going to take the bracket, install it to the PSU itself, and then you can take the extended PSU cable that's included with the case and route it to the proper position. Install your PSU back onto the case once you've plugged all the cables into it, and you're almost good to go. After you take that PCIe riser cable, flip it over the top of the case and just flip that case around where your GPU would sit. Now, when it comes to a GPU, this case can fit a dual slot GPU up to 305 millimeters in length, which is pretty huge and you have plenty of room back there. So I'm not putting a GPU into this rig, obviously. I'm going ahead and I'm installing the Elgato HD60. It's an internal capture card and that's what I'm gonna be using to basically send the feed between both of these PCs. Um, but when it comes to a GPU, you could fit a pretty big one back there. Now, when it comes to cable management, well, it's basically almost non-existent in this case. Uh, basically, you just have to kind of stuff those cables anywhere you can, but they kind of tuck away pretty evenly and nicely and you're all good to go. Everything is very tightly fit in this case. And uh, honestly, I was kind of taken back on how easy, like I said, it was to get everything done and put into this case. Uh, it was pretty, you know, pretty simple. Now, when it comes to these mini ITX builds, you could always expect your computer's temperatures to run a little higher than normal. With all these PC parts tucked away tightly and so close to each other, it just makes sense. But you really have nothing to worry about. This case has plenty of ventilation, and if you are adding a GPU, I would suggest the bigger radiator and the dual fans up top for more airflow. Currently, my CPU's temps sit around 54 degrees Celsius, and they hit around mid 60s to low 70s when in heavy use, and everything runs really smoothly. To be honest, the more I sit here and stare at this case, the more it really makes me want to create a minimal setup for the new studio, and I just might have to add one because this looks really, really clean. Uh, Iquinix, you guys know what you're doing over there. These cases are an absolute knockout. How many of you guys rock a minimal setup? I'm really curious to know. Let me know down below in the comments, and please do not hesitate to drop some of your setup pictures over in the official Discord channel. Currently at the time of this video, the air-cooled version will run you $219, and the water-cooled version you guys saw here today will run you $269 over on Iquinix's website. But no worries, I got you covered. If you want to pick up any of these ITX cases, be sure to use promo code itx hq at checkout to knock $20 off of your order. And while you're there, if you come across anything else you want to grab, like any one of Iquinix's popular keyboards or accessories, like always, you could use the regular promo code QGENHQ to knock 5% off of those items as well. Uh, everything will be linked down below in the description like it always is. And if you guys have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to ask me down below in the comments. If you guys are new here, please consider subscribing. Give the video a huge thumbs up if you liked it. Maybe share it with a friend. And I want to know what your opinion is of this case in general and what you guys think of ITX builds. How many of you guys out there want to see more of this stuff? Please let me know. All right, guys. Most importantly, you stay safe out there. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.